Hello and welcome to the Digitizing Europe Summit. I'm here today with Vittorio Colau, the CEO of the Vodafone Group. Welcome, Vittorio. Thank you. Vittorio, we will talk today about opportunities for the next generation and what the impact is of digital technologies um, for creating jobs and new opportunities for the young generation. Overall, do you think that we can be optimistic about the future of Europe? I think uh, we have to be optimistic about the future of Europe and uh, we need to believe that there is a great future, but in order to be credible in this belief, we need to have the young generation to be optimistic. I mean, no society can be optimistic if the youth is not optimistic. And to do that, we need to work hard. At the moment, 23% of the young people in Europe are unemployed. At the same time, we see that a lot of the ICT jobs are currently unfilled. How can we reconcile this? Well, uh, there is clearly an education problem uh, in Europe. Uh, on one hand, as you correctly say, we have a lot of unemployment. But on the other hand, we know that uh, there will be a lot of jobs in technology that will require people. And actually, this is why we need to be optimistic and to create the optimism. We need to show to the young, to the new generation, that they will acquire the skills that will give them jobs and will give them a future in uh, uh, the Europe of uh, 10 or 20 years from now. And to do that, we need to include uh, digital skills into uh, almost a lifelong uh, learning cycle from the youth to the middle age to the senior so that everybody has a more positive view of what their life will be. What exactly do you think are these skills? You just mentioned digital skills. Could you maybe elaborate a bit on that, what, what you think is I most mean, crucial? Absolutely. Uh, the, if you look at what technology will enable in the, in the coming 10 or 20 years in terms of remotization, cloud services, digital entertainment, automation processes in all sectors, I mean, in transportation, in automotive, in energy, in financial services, there will be an immense need for people who know, first of all, how these things work, so know a little bit of uh, uh, electronics, telecommunication, uh, online services, but most importantly, who know how to apply these things to the different sectors. And there are some positive signs. So we have to see some industries are already evolving a lot in Europe, but we will need to transform everything, the homes, the offices, the public administration, the schools, into a more digital type of environment. So it's not just engineers, it's also people who will do other jobs, but need to understand how the technology can change the other jobs. And this is the big change that Europe has in front of us for the next 10 years. Many people are actually also concerned that robots might replace human labor and that cognitive skills are also replaced by, you know, algorithms, big data, and so on. How do you think the digital economy can really contribute to growth, but also to employment? Can we, is that really, you know, a realistic assumption that there will be more jobs due to digitization? Uh, there will be for sure less jobs or fewer jobs in traditional uh, occupations or traditional uh, uh, sectors. But if you, you think uh, about the massive transformation that we have to create, uh, just to take an example, in our buildings, to make them smart buildings, to make them energy efficient buildings, or in transportation, to make sure that we use the roads, the public space, petrol, in an efficient way. For, I can easily say, 20 to 30 years, there will be a lot of jobs that will be created in sectors that have to transform themselves. Now, of course, the question is, well, when you are at the end of it, what will happen? Will robo robots uh, completely, uh, completely uh, uh, take everything from the humans? I, I don't think uh, we are there. I don't think uh, we uh, will be there. I think mankind always develops new things. But in the meantime, we need to be sure that we can use technology, big data, for, to solve problems like, for example, climate change, to make our Europe, uh, European countries, better places to live. So I would keep always the ethical and uh, job creation issues uh, in the background and think about them. But in the meantime, we need to do what we have to do, which is really teach Europeans how to transform our societies. 
it's certainly not only about teaching, it's also about infrastructure. We need access to um, you know, really powerful networks. Um, how would you at the moment evaluate the current status of the digital infrastructure in Europe and what has to be done? Yeah, we, uh, here we have to be uh, very realistic. Europe had uh, for <clears throat> around 10 years the leadership in the 90s in uh, designing new technologies and implementing new technologies. Then we have lost this leadership, I would say, with uh, uh, you know, the progress of 3G and then 4G. Europe has fallen a little bit behind in fiber, in uh, high-speed NGA, uh, new gener next generation uh, access networks. We have uh, a little bit fallen behind. Companies like Vodafone are investing huge amount of money in order to uh, really catch up and then regain the leadership. Uh, I think we have a chance with uh, the coming of 5G and the coming of, uh, uh, again, pervasive, ubiquitous broadband. But of course, we need uh, three things. We need uh, more focus on research and more focus on regaining the leadership at academic level and scientific level. Second, we need investment, and we are putting the investment. And third, we need a fair competitive environment where everybody knows that they have a fair chance to have a good return on the investment that they make. If we do these three things right, which we did in the 90s, then Europe will regain leadership again uh, in this sector. Thank you very much, Vittorio, for your time. Thank you.